Hi everyone, this is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to see how to deploy a model in Google Cloud. So far, uh, we have seen how to deploy a model in uh, as a local server using Flask, and we also seen how to deploy a model uh, using a Docker container. Now we are going to see how to deploy it in the public uh, cloud server. So we are going to use the same approach. Uh, we are going to use the Iris dataset, which we already covered in the earlier videos. You can also check the description or click the ro top right corner uh, to check those uh, videos. Uh, from those uh, files, uh, I imported uh, everything, the index file, the de local deployment file, and uh, this is the entire training notebook, the data set and uh, requirements and this is the trained model which i saved like this as a pickle file now uh, to start it whenever you are deploying into the cloud mission or a public cloud uh, which is a production environment you have to make some changes apart from this uh, deploy.py so by default flask is a single threaded uh, framework so it's not uh, ideal to use it in the production uh, environment because uh, we have to do some parallelism if multiple requests uh, came in. So to handle those things, uh, we have to use uh, Goonicon. This is uh, more popular as a development server or a production level server in uh, Unix or Linux. But for Windows, uh, you have to use uh, another module because uh, Goonicon not supported for Windows. So let's add that uh, requirement here. You have to install Flask and scikit-learn. Apart from that, you have to install Waitress. In the backend, it is using Goonicon, but uh, this is uh, you have to use if you are using uh, Windows or uh, Linux, it is easy to use. So you just add this uh, requirements.txt here. And apart from that, you have to create a main Python file, main.py. Here we are going to define some configurations uh, using uh, Waitress, so it can handle multiple requests in parallel. So from waitress import serve, this is the function we are going to use from deploy import app. So this is the app we initialized in deploy function. So this is the app uh, we are uh, importing here. Then we will import multiprocessing. We have to initialize some threads, right? So for that, we have to use multiprocessing to get the CPU count. Now if name equals main you can also have the uh, main code file directly but this is a uh, best practices uh, that you can uh, do when you are doing it for uh, production uh, environment first uh, let us get the uh, cpu count get cpu count it will just uh, fetch the cpu count in the machine you are running num cpu equals multiprocessing dot cpu count so this will get the total number of cpus and uh, threads per worker threads per worker so currently uh, maximum i at least we need a minimum of 1 and uh, num cpus will be num cpus minus 1 Let's say you have like 10 cores of uh, CPUs in your machine means we will uh, have minus one because uh, one C CPU will do some system process in the backend. Remaining CPUs will be handling your request. You can also increase the thread count if you need, but uh, this is like an automated uh, fashion. It won't add uh, more load to each of the cores. Now let's call the server like serve and uh, you have to pass the app which we uh, got it from deploy.py and we have to specify the host if you don't know the specific host name means it's better to use 0 .0 .0 .0. and uh, port previously we have specified uh, 5000 but if you are using public co cloud means uh, by default uh, it might uh, have enabled 8080 which is a HTTPS uh, port uh, or else you can also enable the other ports to be opened in your uh, cloud setup and uh, specify the custom port uh, here and finally threads threads equals threads per worker so you are assigning uh, the number of uh, workers 
you are just assigning the number of threads here so you can also try other uh, parameters if you need but uh, you can check the documentation for adding more parameters other than this but for the basic deployment uh, this is enough for us now let's see whether this is uh, running for us or not let's just directly uh, run this it won't show any message uh, i think uh, maybe uh, you can say i'll just stop this for now because usually it's not a good practice to have uh, without any messages server started and uh, here i will say print threads 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 per worker now let's rerun this threads is 3 i think the server uh, started should be uh, before this because it's just uh, running in the loop like infinite loop until we kill the program so that is fine let's uh, just go to the uh, local uh, host and see whether uh, we have the server up and running okay the port is changed for us 8080 now you can see we got the uh, deployment which we seen in the previous videos so these uh, with this you can pass the uh, parameters or input arguments here and we can create predict the uh, flower class like this so this is just the local local deployment but uh, we have uh, completed the uh, arrangements or developments for setting up a production ready server so now that is done we'll just kill this now we have to deploy this in a uh, google cloud i'm going to use google cloud but you can also use the same uh, approach in uh, any public uh, cloud they have a uh, google cloud run which is easier to deploy uh, this kind of uh, environment for this you have to like uh, zip it it will be easy to uh, zip it and unzip it here for uploading and downloading purpose so i'll just go to the uh, respective folder and just uh, copy the whole thing and uh, compress to zip file this will be deploy dot zip so this file i'm going to upload it in the google cloud so when you go to google cloud this is how it will look like you have to choose some uh, project i am just selected my trial project here and just activate the cloud shell here only we are going to upload our uh, files it's see uh, you can see uh, it's initializing the cloud shell machine and you can also open the editor if you want to make some code changes means you can easily use the editor to uh, make all the code changes and uh, redeploy the whole server uh the whole purpose of uh, this kind of deployment instead of uh, creating a machine and running it in the machine all the time this just uh, saves a lot of money it just uh, assigns a cpu whenever uh, it receives some uh, request so it will save a lot of ta time and money when you are having a lot of downtime so it's better to always use this it's like a stateless uh, server Uh, if you are running it as a instance means for each hour you have to pay but uh, this is but if you use this approach means uh, you will uh, pay based on uh, usage basis alone i already have some uh, test deployment which i uh, created for some other uh, project now what i am going to do is i am going to create a uh, or uh, we can just upload it so new file so you can see uh, right click and upload so this is the folder i have you can individually upload all the files but i'll just like to uh, do it in the zip manner so i just uploaded it and uh, you cannot uh, extract it but uh, you can extract it in the command line i'll just open the terminal do ls you can see deploy dot zip right and zip deploy dot zip I think it's better to do it in a folder. So I'll just open the editor just to be on the safe side, right? I don't want all the files to be here. 
I will call this as uh, iris deploy and uh, copy this here let me open the terminal cd iris deploy unzip deploy.py sorry zip and uh, it extracted everything here and uh, let's go to it now you can see in iris deploy we have all the necessary files that we need let's go to the terminal again what you have to do is, is is to run a simple command which is gcloud run deploy that's it just press enter so it's uh, showing the source code uh, location so this is our source code uh, location i'll just press enter now it's asking for the service name you can uh, have it as like iris deploy itself here you can uh, see it for now i will just say um, test iris deploy just authorize it now it's asking for you to specify a region so whichever region is closest to you you can just uh, specify it i'm going with uh, asia southeast one which is nine Allow unauthenticated invocation. You can just uh, have it as yes. Now you can see it's just building and deploying our uh, service. In the back end, it actually builds a Docker container which uses the which will run the main dot py, and uh, it also installs uh, like all the requirements which we passed. If you have a proper uh, project setup, it will just do everything. You don't have to do anything at all. You just have to run this command and pass all the uh, inputs uh, which is asking so this will take around uh, 10 to 15 minutes of time for uh, completely deploy it after that uh, we will check the uh, public url and uh, see how it works but uh, this is uh, the entire uh, workflow once it is deployed we can also see where you can uh, redeploy the app or if you want to delete the app uh, we can see how we can uh, do that so now you can see uh, we have uh, built and uh, deployed the container and uh, it is successful and uh, you can see the service name and uh, and this is the image and it is deployed and this is the service URL. This is a public URL you can share it with anyone and uh, you can access it. If you want to change the URL you can do that uh, customizations and change it to a custom domain as well. Let's click on the URL. So this is the URL as you can see. Let's just uh, have some numbers just to test the input and output. See, it's just uh, working fine. All the inputs has been accepted and it's uh, displaying the class. So this is how you can deploy the uh, local server into a cloud environment. If you want to update uh, any arguments in the Docker container, as this is a Docker container in the backend, and uh, if you want to uh, monitor the traffic means, so you have to go to uh, Google Cloud Run. So I'll just uh, type Cloud Run. Here you can see, right? You can see it, right? Test and test iris deployed. So this is the one uh, which we uh, done just now. If you click on it, we'll just minimize this. Uh, you can see the request count and uh, the memory usage, billable container instance time. See, it's just going up and after uh, we have closed the site, it's just uh, gone down. It's not doing anything. And uh, these are some memory utilization. Everything uh, you can see it here. And uh, you can also see the logs. If you are facing any errors, means uh, you can uh, see the errors uh, here. See all these things uh, you can uh, see. So whenever uh, there is no process, it will just kill the worker. Whenever the new request comes, uh, it will uh, load the server quickly and uh, handle this request. So if you want to edit this deployment, means uh, you can click on edit and uh, deploy the container and uh, you can change the region and all the arguments you can change it here so that's pretty much it guys uh, if you are a docker user means so you can just uh, go to yaml 
and uh, edit this uh, yaml file as well so both does the same thing but this is a uh, gui and this is a, a code file which you can edit and uh, redeploy the app if you redeploy it will be in the same instance as well so whenever uh, like 100 or thousands of uh, requests are coming means it will automatically increase the number of instance as well so this is a perfect setup if you are uh, expecting scalability and uh, save some cost as well so that's pretty much it guys if you have any uh, queries regarding this video please leave a comment below i'll happy to help thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video